Hi, I'm Jason Larson from Radwell International. And I'm Andrew Hess. And today we're going to be talking about pneumatic gas boosters. We're going to go over a couple different things like repair tips, maintenance items, and things that we see typically going wrong with them. Uh, basically everything you ever wanted to know about a pneumatic gas booster, uh, keep them uh, running in tip-top shape. Uh, so we're going to be going over this pump right here. This is a, um, a two-stage pump by the Haskell company. Uh, Haskell's a, a very prominent brand out there in the industry. We've repaired many of them over the years with great success. Uh, we've got great repair procedures on them. We stock a lot of parts uh, for them. Uh, we have a lot of documentation of them and many of our customers uh, out there in the industry use them. Uh, so we've had to come up with some programs in order to keep them running for our customers. Before we begin, here's a quick overview of the Haskell AGT3262 model. This is the pilot valve, and over here we have the air piston. This section is the air drive barrel, this is the connecting rod. On this side you have the exhaust muffler, this is the high pressure barrel, this is the booster outlet. On this side we have the check valves, this is the booster inlet, this is the air exhaust tube, and in this section is the gas piston. It's the air cycling valve. This is the air drive inlet port, the upper and lower caps, and the vent port breather. Jason, when these come in for repair, what do you typically see in terms of failures or uh, you know issues with these pumps? Sure. Uh, the number one thing that we see go wrong on this is due to contamination. Uh, contamination of the air supply or contamination of your gas supply. Um, if you get any um, uh, water in the air, uh, debris uh, uh, in the air, um, that's going to score up these pistons. Um, these uh, components are very delicate. Uh, these are actually made of uh, aluminum. These barrels here are made of aluminum uh, and they're fairly soft. Um, so if you get uh, metal shavings or something like that in there, it's going to score up the piston walls which is going to make gas bypass them and, and have leakage issues. Um, one of the things I see uh, people do that uh, they don't they may not think of is when you're connecting fittings together like an NPT fitting or something of that sort um, and you and when you're putting the fittings together uh, they can actually uh, rub on each other and uh, if there's a, like a galvanized coating or a zinc coating uh, that can come off get into the air supply and go right through so we always recommend the customers filtration 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 always right on the input as close as possible to the um, input ports um, after that, we see uh, seals go bad a lot, uh, just to do wear and tear. Uh, the shuttle valve seals go bad quite frequently. The pistons go bad, uh, piston seals go bad quite frequently. Um, so what we'll do during the repair process is, um, you know, if we have uh, scored up barrels, we'll just go ahead and replace the barrels. Um, we'll replace all the seals and the shuttle valves and the, um, uh, in the high uh, pressure section over there, we'll replace all the seals and barrels if necessary. Um, but uh, it's basically a general overhaul of the entire unit, but uh, mainly due to uh, contamination issues, moisture issues, and things of that. Okay. And the operation of this is pretty straightforward, so we're able to test this and, and imagine what the customer is using this for. Oh, absolutely, yeah. We may have a conversation with the customer about what their application is, and we'll test it as close to their application as possible, for sure. Um, we've had great success with these over the years. We've been repairing these for many years, and we've had really good success with them. So uh, I'm very confident in our ability to repair these um, and, and make them run uh, just as long as they were new for the customer. So now we're going to go ahead and test the gas booster. So today we're just using shop air. Uh, for the safety of the crew, we're only going to be going to about 1,000 PSI. For a repair or a, a testing application, we would use a nitrogen for this gas booster. So we'll plug in the air and then make sure this valve is closed. And so we'll bring this to about 1,000 PSI and we'll keep it there for about 20 to 30 minutes just to make sure that there's no leaks and that everything holds properly. So we'll go ahead and put the uh, shop air into the gas booster portion of the pump. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug in the air to the uh, air drive portion. And so you can hear the piston cycling back and forth, and so that's just building the pressure, and it has to, it's doing that slowly, because as I mentioned, it's going at about 100 PSI, and we'll bring it up to about 1,000.
So I'm removing the air supply at 1,000, and as I mentioned, we'll keep this here for about 20 or 30 minutes. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to add them in the section below. For more information, visit us on radwell.com or connect with us on social media.